Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Renard Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, the Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find these comics and Kickstarters, and all sorts of other stuff that uh, comes up. So, um, yeah, as usual, um, oh, was that loud? Sorry. Um, as usual, uh, I have a string of excuses of why this episode is late and stuff like that, um, but... This one's pretty serious. Uh, so last week I tried to, I tried my hardest to uh, make a make an episode, and a lot of things came up. Um, uh, yeah, um, I don't know if there's really not really an easy easy way to say this one, but um, so I I had a a daughter. My daughter in middle school stayed home with me for a couple of the days of this week, and uh, because. Um, one of her friends uh, committed suicide, and uh, they were pretty close, and it hit her pretty hard. And the school, their grief counseling methods and that, it's just, it wasn't very um, good and healthy for her to be at school because uh, they just treated it like it, it wasn't a big deal. So um, she was home with me, and uh, yeah. So I hung out and kept her cheered up and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, it's it's just crazy to think kids that young are, um, they just don't really see a way out. And, uh, yeah, it's really hard to even picture my daughter thinking of those options and stuff. So um, that's why I'm bringing this up right now is because, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, his his reasons for committing suicide could be a number of things. My daughter said that um, that he was gay and that his uh, parents didn't approve of it, things like that. So yeah, it just it doesn't matter what your kids are going through if you don't support them, it, it could end in terrible results, and you, it's just not worth that. Uh, so. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Just be good parents and uh, support your kids. Let them know that you love them. And, uh, yeah. So, um, this right here is the number for Suicide Hotline. And if, if you need to chat, call this number. Um, and there's also... Uh, if you don't want to speak to someone, there is also a way you can chat with the, a person online and uh, get the help you need. That way, you, I don't. Sometimes you maybe you don't feel comfortable speaking, and uh, it's easier to text back and forth on your laptop or phone. And uh, so yeah, check out the suicide hotline, get help, um, let your friends know what you're going through if you can't talk to your parents and. Uh, yeah, just just know that uh, there are better ways than out of the situation than uh, ending the situation. So, okay, hmm, and yeah, so okay. Um, so first up, I would like to uh, thank Bridgeport. Chronicles for commenting on my last video. Um, they said thank you so much for the review and the shout out and I am grateful that you're liking the story along with the art. The, that was in response to my review of Bridgeport Chronicles and uh, the Vampire Bloodlines comic um, that I reviewed. Love that comic book. There is a Kickstarter going for it right now so I will talk more on that when I get to the um, Kickstarter corner of my episode. So, all right, let me see here. Keep things in order here. Running Kickstarters, I will get to that later. So first up, I would like to, um, oh my gosh, I'm getting all screwed, all screwed up here. Um, yeah, so I have a couple comics to review today uh, on a lighter note, and uh, yeah, I think there's even mention of the Suicide Hotline in the back of one of these comics. Um, so I've read uh, Miskatonic High 11, 
12 and 13 uh, during one of my visits to Plasma, and uh, these were some good reads. Um, yeah, so yeah, in the back of, there's always these uh, interesting stories about how the comics were made, and oh yeah, I, in fact, I think I remember exactly which comic I'm referring to here. Um, let's see here. Oh, it was in the in the twelfth comic. Yeah, in the twelfth comic there was. So that there's always these back matters. The student lounge, I think, is what they call it. Behind the scenes of uh, Miskatonic High, and uh, they mentioned that. Uh, there was another creator that uh, was making a book that they like, and uh, Miskatonic High was drawn into his comic book, and he and they drew his comic book into Miskatonic High. And uh, but before he was even able to, uh, let's see it. So I got oh yeah, I got the same number too. So yeah, this number appeared in this comic um, after. Eddie Headington of the Dunwich Boys comic book. Um, yeah, he uh, he ended his life, and uh, his comic book Dunwich Boys is available on IndiePlanet.com. And if you would like to check out his books, check them out. Um, but sadly, uh, that creator ended his life as well. I'm sorry. This is this is a crazy episode. Um. Anyway. Yeah, so it's pretty serious. Um, it doesn't matter what age you are, uh, things could get pretty rough on you. So I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just I just know that there are people out there that care for you and uh, that are looking out for you, that actually like what you're doing and like you as a person. And uh, and there are other answers. So um, let's see here, Miskatonic High Eleven. Which, I mean, that is an amazing cover right there. I loved it. Miskatonic High 11 here is... Oh, and I, I seriously love uh, how they do their recap scenes. They have one of the characters, and the character goes through everything that's been going on in the comic so far. And, yeah, I love it. I'm going to steal that idea in my next uh, previously page. So, uh, the, the gang go to a... Library. They have to. They're doing some community service because that's basically the premise of these uh, Miskatonic High comics. Oh yeah, let me give you some credits here. So Miskatonic High is uh, written and created by Mike Shea and Ryan Mendoza. Ryan Mendoza is the artist, and they both equally come up with some good storyline stuff for the stuff. The words are written by Mike Shea. And yeah, Miskatonic High, it freaking rocks. Uh, I love this story so much. It's got a uh, Riverdale vibe to it, mixed with uh, some Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Smallville-ish kind of stuff. Really good stuff. So this gang, they do some community service at the library. And uh, there's this weirdo part, uh, cube of pipes in the museum. And it turns out it's a time machine. Anybody near it gets zapped through time, and uh, so so the gang goes from one time to another. They have no control over it. It just keeps taking them through time until they eventually end up in a land filled with aliens and stuff. And uh, yeah, it was a good read. Really good stuff. And Anton, who was usually a ghost, actually had a body through part of this time travel nonsense. So. Uh, it was really cool, and uh, hopefully he gets a bigger part in the comics to come, because I, I like his character. Really good stuff. And the art is always amazing. Really love Miskatonic High. And, so, yeah. And there's a thank you page, but I don't think I made it onto this one. So, that's cool. All those backers. Good stuff. Miskatonic High 11. That was a good one. Really loved what I read. Can't wait till more Miskatonic High comes out. And here's Miskatonic High 12. Same creators, Mike Shea and Ryan Mendoza. Doing the words and the art. And here we go. We've got, let's see, Sarah here. 
giving us the recap. That's cool stuff. And so in this one, uh, yeah, let's see here. In this one, the main character guy, kid, uh, Simon, I think, is his name. Simon's dad is in prison for killing someone, and uh, he's worried that he's going to be a killer because in the, 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 in the very, 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 very first issue of Miskatonic High, they uh, went to a weird land, and there was an old guy who looked kind of like a warlock, kind of uh, doing some magic and stuff with a knife. He's the one that killed Anton and uh, made him a ghost kid. And uh, it was later revealed that this weird wizard guy was Simon, an older version of Simon. And so he's worried he's a killer, and he thinks if he could look into his dad's eyes, figure out what makes him a killer, and if there's any way he can avoid that future where he kills Anton. So, yeah, cool stuff. Really loved it. And uh, this is based on the some Lovecraft stuff where uh, a violin player has to keep a monster at bay by playing his violin at a window. And, uh, yeah, I'm so unfamiliar with the uh, Lovecraft world. I have never read any Lovecraft myself only watched the Lovecraft Country after glomming onto this awesome comic so um yeah and uh, yeah I always loved the teachers lounge stuff their hint their tips on how they came about making the stories and stuff and there's an awesome cover gallery in here really good stuff oh my gosh yeah uh, maybe I should do some fan art for this comic someday and there's a thank you page, but I don't think I made it onto this one either. Uh, I'm not sure what the criteria on that was, if you're back over a certain amount of money or something. I think you get on the thank you page. But yeah, a lot of awesome people helped back this comic and make it a reality. So, that's cool. And issue 13. Issue 13 here is a season of finale of sorts. We've got our little buddy Anton here giving us the uh, recap and so this one a lot of crazy stuff goes on um, we've got uh, Miss Tiss who is a librarian witch teaching uh, Alex how to be a witch and stuff and so the whole gang is going to the Miskatonic High University to see the library there and they've all got their own agendas going on over there and uh, yeah crazy stuff comes to a head they get caught in the act of whatever they're doing, and, uh, yeah, let me show you some awesome art here for a second. There we go. Check out that awesomeness. And, uh, so, yeah, they go to the library. Stuff happens. I don't want to spoil it for you, but, yeah, it, a lot of crazy stuff happens that, uh, brings the, all the stories to a head, and, uh, this is going to be collect it all into the volume two of Miskatonic High, and so that was a good place for them to end it, and uh, collect all those together into one volume, so that was pretty cool. Loved the read, and as always, uh, there's the teacher's lounge stuff where they give you some behind the scenes stuff on how they come up with some stuff, and uh, so I, I really can't say too much about the storyline without giving it all, all away, so I'll just say it was amazing. I loved it. I can't wait for more Miskatonic High, as always. Uh, you know I'm going to tell you all about every Miskatonic High comic that comes along and uh, tell you how much you should back it, because it's awesome. And I actually did make it onto the thank you page of this one. Uh, me and my buddy uh, back this one together. So on the thank you page, it says Harlock and GB of Rent Narb Studios Comics. And you know, obviously I'm GB and my buddy is Harlock. And so I got, I always get double copies. One of these copies goes to me. One copy goes to my buddy, Brooke, uh, Harlock. Sorry, just dropped your real name there. Sorry. Anyway, um, so yeah, and I got to get, get those comics to him pretty soon. And uh, so that he could read them. But yeah, Miskatonic High, all these comics are being collected into a volume two that's on Kickstarter right now. So I will tell you more about that, but it'll be 200 pages of awesomeness, Miskatonic High. And uh, yeah, I'll I will tell you all the details about that one as soon as I get to the Kickstarter corner of this video. 
So that was Miskatonic High. I will drop links in my Twitter on where you can find that. Links in the YouTube show notes also of where you can get those yourself. As I highly, 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 highly recommend reading Miskatonic High. I cannot stress how much that is my favorite book. Always makes it into my top 10 of uh, the year's read. Seriously. Okay, next up on my comics read list is Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll. This is a big old chunky book. A nice little volume here. And uh, this is an anthology of comics. And let's see here. Lots of credits in this, but mostly it's created by Jeff Douglas Messon. And let's see. Yeah, I'll just say he's the main person that's bringing all these artists together to create this book. There is a uh, page one here that tells all about how uh, the story's been kicking around in his head forever. He loves comic books and he uh, has been into comic books, just not sure how to make his own until finally he just decides to go for it, make this uh, sp sex, spies, and rock and roll book into his own thing. And so we follow this comic book, let's see, starts off by telling me how, how this uh, book came about, and throughout the years meeting other creators in that, until one day he decided he's going to make his own book. Alright, I told you all that. So uh, the, the majority of this book follows um, a character named Sam Spades, let me see here, I think I just showed you. A picture of most of the characters. Check that out. That's so awesome. Gotta make sure I... I think there is a little bit of this that's not safe for work, but whatever. And so there's some real awesome artwork right there. Love it. And uh, there's a Kickstarter for this one going as well, so I will tell you more about that as it comes up. But yeah, this is a, this is a collection, an anthology of uh, multiple stories all about this uh, group. I can't remember their names right now. The name of the group, the ISFF, something like that. I, if I see it, I will let you know what it is. Dang it. Anyway, uh, so they're like a spy agency, Agents of Shieldish kind of thing going on. And, uh, and uh, they do various things for the government making sure people are safe, spies are dead, stuff like that. Each art style is cool, different, and uh, there's even a section in this book that, uh, so the uh, creator of it did some novelization form of it, and some of that actually made it into this book. That's pretty cool. I liked how that came about. That worked out pretty cool. And uh, it goes from colored to black and white, obviously with it being different creators and, and anthology, all that stuff. Good stuff, and uh, there's even some stuff about Phil Collins in here. I don't know how that copyright-wise that came about, but that's in there as well. It's uh, basically the Phil Collins No Jacket Required Tour of 85, so I think there's some reference to uh, the characters going to that concert in the storyline, so that that's why that's in there. Oh yeah, there is a very sweet drawing of uh, the headquarters. Oh, here, that, is that where it says it? No, it doesn't say it at the top. Need a sign on their door or something. Oh, there it is. The International Security Foundation in Northern Virginia. So, yeah, that is cool. Check that out. Shows the multiple floors in that place. Really cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, so Sex Spies, Rock and... Sex Spies and Rock and Roll... Really cool book. Uh, enjoyed it a lot. Um, I wasn't su sure what to expect from this book, but I mean, that, that is a beautiful cover. And I uh, had some awesome stories in here. Caught me from the get go. And uh, after reading this, uh, I directly got on my phone and uh, back the next issue. Um, so I will tell you all about the Sam Spades. Volume 1 that is on Kickstarter right now, as soon as I get to the Kickstarter part. But yeah, 
Really awesome stuff. Oh man, and this came with stickers. I am a sucker for stickers. So check out this, Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll. A lot of stickers here that are going to be going onto my comic book boxes. I think that one's a bookmark. But yeah, that one's really cool. Signature on that. A lot of trading cards that came along with this one. This one had so many goodies, it was insane. So yeah, a lot of trading cards. Mostly uh, cover and pinup art stuff. And a dossier of uh, all the characters and whatnot. Oh yeah, hey, and there's a really cool picture of the headquarters on a postcard. So that'll end up on my wall behind me. Really cool stuff. Oh, there's a really good one. Check that out. That's beautiful. So yeah, a lot of awesome prints and stuff. Cool stuff. Um, Sex Spies and Rock and Roll. It was a great read. I'm so happy I'm back in the next one. And uh, that Kickstarter is going until February 13th, so you have some time to check that one out. Really good stuff. And the, other, the next book I have to talk about is an issue one called They Call Her The Dancer. They Call Her The Dancer. Is written by Catherine Calamaria. Oh, wait. Calamia? Catherine Calamia. Art by Evie Cantata. Colorist Danny Fabrico. Sanchez Chavez, lettered by Matt Bowers, designed by Brant Fowler, I've recognized that name before, and it has a bunch of other covers, but I think this cover right here is by E.V. Cantata, so really good stuff, they call her the dancer, um, so basically, uh, this is another one that I had to, I had to pull it up from my, uh, the read pile because there's a Kickstarter going for it right now. And uh, this one, if you like the what ifs, this is what if the Punisher was a ballet dancer. And uh, so this girl, um, this girl witnesses someone kill, uh, killed her family right in front of her. And uh, she, grows up to become a trained dancer. Let me see here. There we go. There's a there's a beautiful page I can show you. So she uh, she's in the ballet circuit. She's doing uh, doing shows and getting bad reviews, saying that the reviewers say that her heart's not into the dance, stuff like that. But really, uh, her heart is in the uh, getting revenge. She goes around the rooftops at night killing people that are harming others, and uh, basically she's become a contract killer. She takes jobs for this place, they give her files showing her uh, why these people are bad, even videos and whatnots, links, and uh, yeah, so she sees that these people are bad, she goes out and she kills them. And uh, basically, this is what if Punisher was a ballet dancer. Really good stuff though, um, let me see. I like the artwork, the story moved along great, and uh, I'm so excited for uh, Kickstarter issue number two coming up, and uh, jumped on board on that one myself. So I like that panel right there too where it just goes solid white, that looked really cool looking. And uh, yeah, issue two is on Kickstarter right now, I will tell you about that right now but yeah the dancer number one it was a great story loved it and uh that the way it ended that last page i just man i gotta know what's going on next and so i can't wait to see the next issue read that book and uh find out what's going on keep going find out what's going on in issue three after that all that and so now i'm going to tell you about the kickstarter corner here so, Kickstarter Corner, as you know, is all about all the campaigns I'm either back in or think is cool. And as you know, every one of these books I review uh, are comics that I have backed or bought. Uh, none of these are sent to me as comps or anything. These are specifically comics I believe in. 
comics I've read and comics I've bought and backed. And uh, I just read these and basically my goal is to uh, find something cool, let you all know about it because uh, the worst thing in the world is finding something cool, sitting on it, and then nobody else knows about it and it stops getting made. So yeah, I want everybody to know about these things so they keep getting made. So first up on my list is This Land, issues one through four. Oh shoot, I think this one ended because yeah, I've already seen it hit my bank account. So This Land, Kickstarter is over. I will go on to the next one. Black Coffins, number one, is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, Black Coffins is about uh, Bella's old life catches up to her, causing the death of her family, of her and her family. And now she has to work for the Angel of Death for her children. So uh, basically she makes a deal with the Angel of Death. And if she kills a certain amount of people, I don't something like that, uh, she gets her family back. And uh, yeah, the artwork is insanely awesome. It's by Carola Barelli, who is a creator that uh, I've bought plenty of stuff that she's drawn. Um, first top of my head, I think uh, she's... She's one of the creators on uh, Destiny New York, one of my favorite series, and um, a bunch of other stuff I can't think of right now, but I know I have a lot of her stuff in my collection. And, uh, yes, let's see, Marcel Dupree and Joshua Metzger are also involved in this one, so I think it's uh, No Sleep or Evolution Publishing, one of those two, or both of those, I'm not sure. So this is a 32-page comic book, 24 pages of story, and 8 pages of previews. It's pretty awesome, and uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to back it myself until I read the, the uh, preview pages that were in the Kickstarter, and after that I'm like, yep, I don't want to miss out on this one. The story looks amazing, sounded awesome, and uh, those preview pages were awesome, the artwork is awesome. Jump on Black Coffins number 1 before February 2nd. It's on Kickstarter right now. Cult Heroes 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, I think I just reviewed Cult Heroes number 2 last video. So Cult Heroes has some amazing artwork, uh, an insane coloring style that, man, I wish I could figure out how to color like that because it is amazing. 24 pages of story and uh, it's Done by one sole creator, uh, Raymond Estrada. Check that one out. Cult Heroes number one through three is a hero heroically horrific comic series about killing your heroes. On Kickstarter right now until February 3rd. The Crude Knight Collected Edition is on Kickstarter right now. It's King Arthur meets Mad Max and a dash of There Will Be Blood equals Crude Knight. 110 pages. After reading the preview pages, I had to back it, and uh, this is from Plastic Sword Press, who uh, did some comics that I've already backed. Um, let's see. They did uh, the Super Scouts. Yeah, that's one I backed, and um, I think the Axeman. So, Super Scouts, it was amazing. I loved reading it, and uh, Crude Knights, the, the preview pages, look insane. Um, so this says uh, King Arthur plus Mad Max and a dash of there will be blood equals crude knight and I also sensed from my read of it a little touch of uh, Cobra Kai in there so yeah that was pretty cool that was in the preview pages that they had offered up so a crude knight collected edition 110 pages on Kickstarter until February 9th. Bleeding Pulp number one, horror comics for mature readers, is on Kickstarter right now. A woman's battle against demon demonic forces of evil responsible for killing her brothers and giving her supernatural powers. Um, so I think what's going on in the story is this lady witnesses at when she's a child, uh, these monsters come out from under the bed, kill her little brothers, and then she wants to get revenge on them. And uh, it's 56 pages, looks awesome. It's from J Justin Gray, the creator of Standstill. So, looks awesome, good stuff out there. 
Bleeding Pulp number one, horror comics for mature readers, is on Kickstarter until February 10th. Miskatonic High Volume 2 is on Kickstarter right now. River of Blood, 200 pages of awesome Miskatonic High comics. Collecting issues 7 to 13 of the acclaimed, tongue-in-cheek, Lovecraftian horror comic series, along with fun extras. So, uh, speaking of fun extras, uh, I'm getting a bunch of stickers with my volume 2. That's really cool. And uh, there are keychains, buttons, and metal bookmarks. And you can also get Lovecraft PI along with the, your pledge. So if you're new to Lovecraft PI, you can get all the Lovecraft PI comics with it. Miskatonic High meets Lovecraft PI. Miskatonic High Volume 1 and 2. So much awesomeness. Uh, so much good stuff. I'm not sure if the Berserker comic is in there, but... Maybe you could get that one there too, but there's also a Kickstarter for Berserker right now. So I'll tell you about that when I get to that one. So Miskatonic High, Volume 2, 200 pages of awesomeness on Kickstarter until February 10th. Berserker Solo Island. Hey, that's what I was just talking about. Berserker Solo Island, Book 4 of 8, is on Kickstarter right now. Where a deadly pathogen is released on a small island, causing the locals to go berserk in the 1950s horror series. Uh, yeah, it's another series that I'm loving. I didn't even know I loved Lovecraft stuff so much, but uh, these guys are really cranking out some awesome uh, Lovecraft stuff. Um, maybe maybe the reason why I love Lovecraft, or their versions of Lovecraft so much, is uh, I grew up a Dean Koontz fan, and this Berserker Solo Island totally fits into uh, any fanhood you have for Dean Koontz books. So check out Berserker Solo Island, book four of eight, on Kickstarter till February 11th. Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll, The Spades Volume no, Volume 1. Make 100 limited edition copies. They're going to number each copy too. Only 1 to 100 is all they're going to do. Spades, the main character, gets a solo book of his own. And I'm not even sure how many pages this one will be because it started out like at 22 pages, but then they keep tacking on... Uh, Every time they meet a, meet a stretch goal on the Kickstarter, they keep, say, hey, we're going to do this many more pages. We're going to do this many more pages. If I had to guess, um, it's definitely over 40 pages, this comic book. So check out Sex, Spies, and Rock and Roll, The Spades Volume 1, on Kickstarter right now until February 13th. Ooh, that could be a good Valentine's present to yourself. Toddler Apocalypse is on Kickstarter right now, and I heard... Heard about this one through uh, one of the many podcasts I listened to. Can't tell you which one it was because I don't know off the top of my head. But one of the podcasts I listened to mentioned the Toddler Apocalypse. I looked into it and checked it out. It is a 64-page anthology about the hardest part of surviving an apocalypse is having kids. And uh, yeah, I would agree. I could not agree more because, man, I would hate to go through an apocalypse and have to worry about, like, a quiet place, there's no way I'd survive that one, because I can't keep quiet myself. Trying to keep my kids quiet? Uh-uh. I've got a boy that when he's sitting there drawing, or even just sitting in a corner doing nothing, he's like, do 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 making those uh, tunes in his head, out there in the open, out of his head, for all of us to hear, and it, it drives you nuts after an hour or two of the same old do 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 Anyway, Toddler Apocalypse... The, it's got a pin involved in this one too. Uh, I'm a sucker for enamel pins. This one has a pin of uh, the aliens that come to attack in Toddler Apocalypse. So check it out. Toddler Apocalypse 64 page anthology on Kickstarter right now till February 18th. Vampire Bloodlines is on Kickstarter right now. Issue 4 of uh, the little comic book, Vampire Bloodlines, uh, that I, I think I reviewed in the last episode good stuff. Um, they have cosplay covers. Those, man, they're doing so good on those. Amazing stuff with uh, Ivy Cosplay and Vampire Philia. Really cool. Um, so 24 pages, manga size comics. Um, that's another thing that I like about it is they're, they're doing a different thing. They come out in a different size. And uh, so this is going to be the story about the aftermath of an assassination plot plot from issue 3 that went awry and uh, did not work out for him. 
So 24 pages, Vampire Bloodlines number 4 on Kickstarter till February 4th. I mean, nope. Okay, it's Vampire 4. Vampire Bloodlines 4 is on Kickstarter till February 20th. Adept number 2 is on Kickstarter right now. Uh, the return of this epic Shaolin series, Amy deals with the fallout after a mysterious attack on the international pop star Sasha True. So the first issue was about uh, this this girl takes her sister to a concert, and these uh, terrorists take over the concert, threaten to kill this uh, singer Sasha, and uh, she ends up protecting the singer with her uh, kung fu and stuff. It was really cool. Um, it's got a touch of Iron Fist and uh, Cobra Kai and um, yeah, and Kung Fu. Love Kung Fu. Um, there's this show on HBO right now called Kung Fu that I've been watching, and uh, yeah, it's got a little touch of that. Love it. And this is by a great team. Um, Charlie Stickney, who does White Ash, is involved in this one too. So it's awesome. I love it. The artwork is different. It's unique. Um, not a whole lot of comics out there doing this kind of cool style to it and uh, so check out the adept 2 44 pages on kickstarter till february 24th the dancer one and two is on kickstarter right now psychological martial arts thriller the dancer assassin is forced to deal with her childhood trauma of wrestling of witnessing her parents murder 22 pages did I already say that? 22 pages. Uh, Mia must face the fact that she has become the villain of her own story. There is a Kaylin Smith cover. Kaylin Smith uh, draws the comics loot and for goodness sake one of the comics that made it to my top 10. And uh, yeah, so check out The Dancer 1 and 2. You can get both issues on this Kickstarter until February 24th. Vampire Detective in Space, number one, is coming to Kickstarter right now. It is from the creator of the Unicorn Vampire Hunter. So a detective story about a vampire living in space. It is in the future, so it's got... Gave me a lot of uh, cool Spider-Man 2099 vibes, but with a vampire on a spaceship. So that's cool. And uh, he has a snarky AI companion. So that's pretty cool too. I like that. That's that's why I got the uh, Spider-Man 2099 vibes from it. But it's a vampire. I am a sucker for vampire stories, as you know. So solving crimes the cops can't figure out. And I'm getting me a huge bundle of stickers of their uh, blood, which looks like it, it's like a a Mountain Dew looking True Blood kind of stuff. So check out Vampire Detective in Space number one on Kickstarter till February 28th. Now, these comics are not on Kickstarter yet, but I'm looking forward to them getting there. Starside comic is coming to Kickstarter soon, so I will have to pull that from the read pile and make sure I get that one read. Thistleheart number one, Three Ravens, is coming to Kickstarter soon. I don't know anything about it other than uh, some of the creators of... Uh, one of the creators, um, John Schlimm, creator of Goth Ghost Girl is involved. Ovation Comics is involved, so that one's on my saved list. Super Best Friend 1 and 2 is going to Kickstarter. Um, I just barely read Super Best Friend number 1, and I, I, will I will be reviewing that one next episode, so as soon as that Kickstarter is live, I will tell you all about it, but I really enjoyed it, so can't wait to tell you about that comic. Tart Volume 2 is coming to Scout Comics soon, so you could get that one in your co comic shops. Uh, yeah, I really love Tart Volume 1, so I can't wait to get my hands on Tart Volume 2. Awesome art styles. Like, it's all done by the same artist, but somehow it look, every issue looks like it's done by a different artist. It's insanely awesome. Uh, it goes from painting to drawing to watercoloring to uh, chalk drawing in a few here and there. So... Tart Volume 2, come into K Scout Comics. Can't wait for that one. So, yeah, uh, that's all I've got for you today. 
Uh, don't forget that you can always find Peter Pan the Vampire Comics, which I make, um, on IndiePlanet.com. They are free to download. Issues 1, 2, and 3 are free to download. Or you could buy the hard copies. That would really make me happy. Someone just bought some uh, just a couple days ago. Downloaded all three of my comics. So that was really cool. If you happen to be that person, let me know what you think. I would love to hear that. Uh, don't forget that I have a Patreon. If you want your name shouted out on this comic or on this video, uh, let me know and I will do this. I will hold up a card just like this that says... Hey, thank you, Gary Brantner, that's me, for uh, backing me on the uh, in, on the Patreons. Uh, here's the Instagram, or the Twitter and the Facebook of Gary Brantner. Well, I gotta practice that for when I get some actual peoples. Anyway, so yeah, thank you for watching my video so far. And if I mentioned your uh, Kickstarter, thank you for making an awesome comic that uh, excites me and gets me excited for reading comics, all that fun stuff. So let's see what else. That's all I got for you today, and uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing through my, all my uh, fumbles and tongue twisters and all that fun stuff. And uh, even uh, thank you for dealing with uh, that sad out opening. Don't forget, um, yeah, there are people that care about you. And uh, talk to your friends, family, anybody just know that there there are other ways besides ending your life um, yeah talk to the people at the suicide hotline prevention use the chat or the phone number Google search them and you'll come up with the same chat where you could do it that way um, just know that yeah if even if you need to talk to me um, talk to somebody uh, just just know that you are important and uh, yeah there are better ways there's more to there's things going on that just I, oh, I, don't, I just don't know um, what I'm saying I know how it is though I I had those feelings myself in high school and uh, once I got past high school and got into my own family created my own family, uh, things got better, and uh, yeah, like, that makes me think of, uh, I recently watched uh, This Is Us with my wife, and there, he was at his mom's funeral, and he says at the funeral that uh, the hardest part of growing up was his father, uh, his father beat his mom and him, and uh, getting away, making their own family, and that, that was the best thing that ever happened to him, so... If something like that's happening with you, just know that there is another way out, and that is by finding people who care about you, letting them know, and, uh, yeah. So, don't keep it inside. Let people know. Talk to people. Talk to anybody. And, uh, thank you for watching Renard Studios Comics.